The new 10th Gen ZBook Studio mobile workstation offers two major upgrades. 13th Gen Intel Core processors up to i9-13900H, as well as options for both NVIDIA RTX ADA Generation GPUs or NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPUs for more general purpose use cases. Does it hold up its title of a high performance, slim and mobile workstation? Let's find out. <music> For viewers who have watched my Studio G9 review, you will notice not much has changed on the outside. That's good news, as the Studio G10 is still stylish with round corners giving it a premium slim look. The military standard 810H tested chassis is rigid, with hardly any flex on the display lid or the keyboard deck. Talking of the display lid, it's difficult to open due to its slender design, however you can open it with one hand. It's not the lightest mobile workstation, but considering what's packing inside, it's fairly mobile at 1.73 kilograms or 3.81 pounds. To open the bottom cover, slide the middle rubber foot of the base enclosure to the left and up to reveal the screw underneath. Unscrew the four T5 captive screws and pry open the cover. There are two SODIM memory slots supporting up to 64GB DDR5 in dual channel mode. The single PCIe NVMe M.2 Gen 4 storage slot is located between the removable 86Wh battery. The WLAN card is not removable. The two main display options available to the Studio G10 is the 16-inch 1920x1200 400 nits 100% sRGB and the HP Dreamcolor 120Hz 3840x2400 IPS 500 nits 100% DCI-P3. Both display options have a 16-10 aspect ratio for more height space and fantastic viewing angles. If you compare the two screens, the more expensive Dream Color display has a noticeable vivid color range with deep blacks and vibrant colors. Both have excellent brightness ratings and anti-glare coating, allowing them to be used near a sunny window or bright indoor lighting. The 1220 panel is suitable for general usage, whereas the Dream Color panel with 100% DCI P3 is aimed at professional content creators and graphic designers. Tip, there is a 4K OLED touchscreen display option, but beware, there are reports of OLED screen burn on previous models. The single hinge design goes back away, not quite flat, giving flexible viewing angles to view on. On the left hand side we have a power connector, two Thunderbolt 4 with USB 4 Type-C 40 gigabits per second signaling rate, USB power delivery display port 1.4, HP sleep and charge, and a headphone microphone combo jack. On the right side we have a Nano Kensington lock, one USB Type-A port with 5 gigabits per second signaling rate with charging, one USB Type-C 10 gigabits per second signaling rate with USB power delivery and display port 1.4 and a micro SD 7.1 media card reader. There's an Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX211 2x2 and Bluetooth 5.3 wireless card inside. Wireless connectivity was solid and reliable throughout testing. Bluetooth was also excellent using a mouse or speaker. The HP Premium Quiet keyboard is spill resistant with a drain hole and a full size keyboard. There's no number pad, so this can be a deal breaker for some. The good news is the fantastic keyboard hasn't changed from the predecessor G9. You still get large, comfortable keys to type on, great travel and almost silent when touch typing. Great for people who like to work in quiet environments. The Dream Color model has an RGB keyboard lighting option managed by the HP Z Lightspace app. Similar to a gaming laptop, you can set different RGB profiles with various RGB special effects like waves, color cycles and flashing keys. The F12 key is customizable to open an application, folder or favorite website. The generously sized clickpad made of glass with multi-touch gesture support is comfortable to glide your fingers on. The integrated buttons are tactile and virtually silent in operation. The two main speakers are located on the sides of the keyboard and the two woofers have slits either side of the keyboard wrist deck. The audio from the Bang & Olufsen tuned four speakers are phenomenal as laptop speakers go. Loud, balanced sound, great mids and plenty of bass. Not quite MacBook Pro levels, but close. The 720p webcam hasn't changed from the G9 model. It has IR sensors for Windows Hello authentication and two top-facing microphone dual-ray digital microphones to pick up group chat. New is AI noise suppression software to block out unwanted background noises. In practice, this works well. As for the webcam, the quality is nothing to write home about. Above average video quality. Okay for the odd Teams conference with colleagues. Both review models are equipped with a 13th gen Intel i7-13700H 
that offers six performance cores and eight efficient cores. Turbo boosts technology up to 5 GHz. The CPU is rated at 45 watts base power, along with 32 GB of DDR5 5600 MHz memory up from 4 800 MHz on the G9 and a 1 TB M.2 2280 PCIe Gen 4 SSD. No surprise the Studio G10 flies through most things thrown at it, whether it's basic office tasks, Adobe apps like Photoshop or Premiere Pro, or 3D CAD work. For our benchmark tests, we set Extreme Performance Mode in Windows and plug the laptop into the mains during testing. Here are the benchmarking results for the ZBook Studio G10. 3D Mark Times by results came in with an overall score of 9,590, CPU score of 13,325, and a graphics score of 9,139. 3D Mark Times by Extreme overall came in at 4,350, graphics score of 4,159, and CPU score of 5,885. 3D Mark Port Royal score of 5,532, 3D Mark Speedway score of 2,290. Superposition resulted in a score of 17,144. Geekbench 6 CPU benchmark resulted in a single core score of 2,525 and 13,559 in multi-core. The GPU compute benchmark results came in with a score of 96,493. Cinebench R23 testing produced a score of 15,556 multi-core and 1,841 single-core. PC Mark 10 had overall score of 6,607. 3D Mark Time Spy results came in with an overall score of 9,370, CPU score of 13,186, and a graphics score of 8,915. 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme overall came in with 4,328, graphics score 4,134, and a CPU score 5,908. 3D Mark Port Royal score of 5,433, 3D Mark Speedway score of 2,271. Superposition resulted in a score of 16,108. Geekbench 6 CPU benchmark resulted in a single core score of 2,587 and 13,782 in multi-core. The GPU compute benchmark results came in with a score of 94,345. Cinebench R23 testing produced a score of 15,671 multi-core and in single core 1,842. PC Mark 10 had an overall score of 6,921. The i7-13700H sits between just below the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS and 4-9% higher than the previous i7-12700H in general benchmarking results. The dual fans stay quiet during general usage and even when working on Adobe Premiere Pro or Lightroom, during heavy 3D rendering or CAD, the fans do get audible and loud. Thanks to the vapor chamber, the G10 keeps cool even under heavy workloads. Temperatures range from 37 Celsius, 98.6 Fahrenheit, on the 4070 near the top vents, and 36 Celsius, 96.8 Fahrenheit for the 3000 ADA. 36 Celsius, 96.8 Fahrenheit at the middle of the chassis on both GPU versions. 29 Celsius, 84.2 Fahrenheit on the 3000 ADA versus 33 Celsius, 91.4 Fahrenheit on the 4070 when idle. Here's a list of the target audience for the HP ZBook Studio G10. Creative pros, product designers, architects and engineers, data scientists, game and VR developers. The two review models have an Intel Iris XE integrated graphics and a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 8GB GDDR6 memory and the RTX A3000 ADA with 8GB GDDR6 memory. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 laptop GPU is based on the AD106 chip and uses the ADA Lovelace architecture, offering 4,608 cores and a 128-bit memory bus. The RTX 4070 offers 144 tensor cores and 36 ray tracing cores. The NVIDIA RTX 3000 ADA generation has identical specs to the 4070. Difference between them is the Quattro series GPUs ship with different BIOS and drivers than GeForce cards like the 4070. The RTX 3000 is targeted at professional use rather than gaming. Talking of gaming, the RTX 3000 is fast enough to run many games in 1440p with high quality settings. Similar story of course with the RTX 4070, both considered high-end GPUs. Let's take a look at some gaming samples for both cards.
HP has a wealth of security features with the Studio G10, a fingerprint reader located below the arrow keys, electronic privacy webcam shutter activated by pressing a button, IR sensors for Windows Hello authentication, and a TPM security chip. HP has also included HP Wolf Security for Business, hardware-enforced security features and layers of security, protected from a BIOS level to desktop malware scan. The G10 has the same 6L 86Wh battery inside as the previous G9. The 47 model in balance mode 80% brightness on with general office usage gave 5.5 hours battery life due to heavy power consumption from the 4K Dream Color display. The RTX 3000 model gave 7 to 8 hours battery life thanks to the lower power Full HD display panel. On max performance and brightness with CAD or 3D rendering work, expect less than 1.5 hours from the 4070 and 2.5 and hours with the RTX 3000. There is fast charging capability with the 200 watt external AC power adapter, 50% in 30 minutes. The good, the bad, and the really bad. Sumptuous build. The G10 remains extremely well built with a modern design, solid single hinge and rigid chassis, wrapped up in a thin and light case for a mobile workstation. Powerful components, a combination of the i7-13700H, DDR5 memory, PCIe Gen 4x4 SSD and fast dedicated graphics gives the G10 excellent performance. Then again with a high price tag you would expect it. Ice cooling. Okay, bit of exaggeration, but the vapor chamber cooling with dual fans does a very good job of keeping the CPU and GPU in check. Note, vapor chamber cooling is only available on higher GPU models. Amazing audio. The Studio G10 keeps its excellent quad speakers up there with the best laptops for audio quality. Single SSD. Most laptops in this category have twin M.2 SSD slots, but the G10 only has room for one. Shame, as the secondary SSD would be handy for additional storage or caching. Pitiful battery life. Not a surprise when you have powerful components combined to drain the life of the fairly large 86 watt hour battery. Expensive. If you need to ask, you can't afford a G10. Prices start from $2,500 or $3,074 to £3,600 or $4,425 for the i9 RTX 4080 GPU flagship model. In mitigation, you are buying top components. There's healthy competition in the premium mobile workstation category. What are the alternatives to the HP ZBook Studio G10? In no particular order, here's some to consider. Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 6. Dell Position 7680. Apple MacBook Pro 16. Razer Blade 16 2023. MSI Creator Pro Z16 HX Studio B13V. Dell XPS 17. Asus ProArt Studio Book 16 OLED H7604. The ZBook Studio G10 retains many of its great features from its predecessor, the G9. Premium design and sturdy chassis. Vapor chamber cooling in the higher GPU models keeping the G10 cool running. Performance is fantastic with the i7-13700H processor and the choice of professional graphics, aka RTX 3000 ADA or consumer RTX 4070 variants. Both GPUs give superior after-hours gaming as well. The quiet keyboard has excellent typing action and a generous trackpad. Plenty of IOs including two Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI, microSD card reader, USB Type-A and Type-C port. Memory is upgradable to 64GB DDR5. The PCIe Gen 4x4 drive is upgradable to 4TB, but second M.2 SSD slot would have been nice. The Studio G10 was never cheap, but if you start customising the options at point of sale, it can go up to an eye-watering £5,000 or $6,096 for the i9-13900H RTX 4000 GPU Dreamcolor 4TB 64GB model. Battery life is disappointing considering it's aimed as a lightweight mobile workstation. Competition is getting fierce in this category. To stay ahead, the HP engineers need to offer AMD processor options, a second SSD slot, SD card reader, and maybe a six-speaker audio system in the next generation. Overall, the HP ZBook Studio G10 is a powerful and premium mobile workstation with tried and tested features if you can afford the price tag. What do you guys think? Leave your comments and discuss below. Hope you guys enjoyed the review of the HP ZBook Studio G10 laptop. Please click on the like button if you enjoyed this review video and subscribe if you would like to watch more of our tech videos. Thanks for watching. Cheers.